The human brain is a magnificent machine. Scientists haven't even begun to understand it, and it's not like they haven't had the time to study it. We are wonders of the natural world when you think about it, especially from a technological perspective. Look at what we've created for ourselves to live in. Electronics, digital everything, it's amazing. Which leads us to games. It's amazing we can make them, but if you think about it, it's amazing that we can play them. So why? And how? Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today GameRanks wants to ask the question, how do our brains allow us to play video games? So you sit down and boot up your favorite game. You load up your most recent save, and boom, it's time to go. And whether this game is the latest in a series you've played since the beginning, or just a game that you're really fond of and played quite a bit, it's like second nature to you. You just go. It could be Uncharted or Tomb Raider. It could be Forza Motorsport. It could be Doom. Or it could be Mario. Or even in spring of 2017, Sonic Mania. I guarantee more than a few people will play that like second nature. Whatever game we're talking about, it's the thing that you like the best, it's the thing that you're the best at, and it's uncanny when you get going. You might even say it's like you're on autopilot. But how? What exactly is this state? Partially, it's muscle memory. But simply muscle memory doesn't explain why someone is able to just sit down and be good at something. How you're able to just sort of allow the game to take over. Even though obviously it's not the game that's taking over, it's your brain. Well, believe it or not, it's actually a habit. Now that doesn't entirely explain it, so obviously we'll have to go a little bit deeper than that. But the way that your brain is dealing with it is essentially like a small network of habits to react to the various situations that you're incredibly used to that take place in the game. This kind of enemy flies at you, you do this. This kind of obstacle gets in your way, you do this. So essentially, it's unconscious competence. There's four stages of ability. Unconscious incompetence, which is where you're not good at something and you don't know why. Conscious incompetence, which is when you're not good at something, but you figured out why. Conscious competence, which is when you get good at something, but you have to sit there and think about it the whole time in order to stay good at it because it's a matter of understanding, not a matter of skill. Which is that point when you're like, hold on, hold on, let me concentrate, I'm, I'm starting to get it, just let me, let me think. And unconscious competence, a series of habits that make something look like you were just made to do it. The way this is looked at is as a default mode network, which means the various neurons and synapses of your brain are acting as if there isn't really much external stimuli. Which is actually funny to think that the reason you get that good at a game that it's second nature is that your brain isn't regarding it as external stimuli. It's entering daydream mode except for you're not going internal. You're staying external. In fact, you're interfacing with a machine designed to take your input. In essence, when it becomes second nature in this way, you're actually somewhat bonded with the machine in a way that you really only ever do with daydreams. If you think about it, it's actually mind-blowing. It's a very analog connection, no doubt, in that you aren't actually interfacing in a direct way. In fact, you're interfacing through various optical networks that start in the machine to generate light that your eyeballs gather and process. And really, if you think about it, there's literally no degree of actual connection. There's various biological and mechanical devices that are being used to transfer electrical signals between yourself and a machine, and it's weirdly rudimentary if you think about it. But your brain is actually able to overcome all of that and look at it as though you are in that world. It adopts that world. It takes that world in and it acts as though that is either just the default setting for what's going on right now, or it might even look at it as though it's generating it. Either way, it's able to put itself there in such a way that you're able to act on instinct in such a fluid manner. You might want to call this immersion, and a lot of people really give a crap about the word immersion. I'm not one who gets super excited about it, but it's exciting to know that your brain handles things in a way where it adapts so deftly into a virtual world that it can take over an autopilot function, borderline daydreaming within an external 
virtually created world so fluidly that it simply adapts a series of habits to what goes on in that virtual world. This is also why if there is some kind of external stimuli coming out of playing a video game when you're that immersed and acting on instinct and habit and playing the game as though it's fluid, as though you are one with the game, is almost the same as coming out of a daydream. Say if somebody got in your way or snapped their fingers or said, hey, I need you to do something. You blink your eyeballs and shake your head a little bit and go, oh yeah, there is a world where Bowser isn't attempting to kidnap Princess Peach. Oh right, I wasn't actually trying to thwart that terrorist attack. True. What this essentially indicates is that your brain is capable of integrating video games with your imagination and your self-referential thought. On top of that, it's able to call upon habits to sort of manage the daydream and ensure that it goes smoothly. I mean, think about how amazing that is. If you're really good at a game to the point where it's like you're not playing a game, it's just instinct, it's just happening, you're just flowing. It's you in a state where your brain is essentially locked on to this so hard that everything else kind of melts away. Now, there are gonna be some people that say that's kind of freaky. I don't know if I like that. And to that kind of person, I would say, does it really harm anyone? Is it not more amazing than it is weird? Because if you want to say something like, I don't know if I really want to know that people can be that immersed in a video game. I don't know how that helps society. At the University of Geneva, a study was done on the visual abilities of gamers and non-gamers. The professor in charge of it, Daphne Bavalier, found that individuals who play action games have markedly better visual ability than people who don't. It has to do with being able to switch the attention almost on autopilot. A similar study at the Max Planck Institute of Human Development was done on people who were playing Super Mario 64 DS. And over two months, they were found to have had the areas of the brain that have to do with navigation and fine motor control had grown, and had grown in a manner that the people who were not playing it in the experiment did not experience. There are theories that playing video games will help you considerably as your brain ages, and maybe even help prevent things like Alzheimer's disease and other degenerative mental illnesses. They've been found to help you multitask better, and in this world, you have to be able to multitask. There's no other way to function in this society. All jobs ask you to, period. But those are justifications. Does it really matter? For me, it's more of a, this is amazing. It's amazing that the brain works this way type thing. I love this. I love knowing exactly what happens that causes me to get so immersed that I move in on autopilot mode. I love knowing that the line between me and the machine isn't so fine. I find that pretty cool. What game do you get most immersed in when you play? Do you go in on autopilot mode on anything? Feel free to brag in the comments. I'm actually interested in your bragging today. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. And the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.